Good morning and welcome to Daily Morning Prayer. This is for Monday, May 17th. We're continuing out of Common Prayer, a liturgy for ordinary radicals. And on this day we remember, May 17th in 1968, the Cantonsville Nine, which included two Catholic priests, went into the Selective Services offices in Cantonsville, Maryland, and burned several hundred draft records in a direct action against the Vietnam War. They were arrested, tried, and found guilty of destroying government property. After the nine were sentenced, one of the priests, Dan Berrigan, asked the judge if the Lord's Prayer could be recited. All in the courtroom, including the judge and prosecuting attorneys, rose and joined in the prayer. O Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us bow down and kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Our song for this morning is Freedom Train. It's a freedom train a-comin', it's a freedom train a-comin', it's a freedom train a-comin'. Get on board, get on board. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 86, verses 6 through 10. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the time of trouble I will call upon you, for you will answer me. Among the gods there is none like you, O Lord, nor anything like your works. All nations you have made will come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great, you do wondrous things, and you alone are God. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. Our Old Testament reading continues out of the book of Numbers. We're at chapter 20, verses 14 through 29. Moses sent emissaries from Kadesh to the ruler of Edom with the following message. This message is from your comrade Israel. You know of the hardships that have come upon us. Our ancestors went down into Egypt and we dwelled there for many years. The Egyptians mistreated us and our parents, but when we cried out to our God, we were heard and were sent an angel to lead us out of Egypt. Now we are here at Kadesh, a town on the border of your territory. Please let us through. We will not trample any fields or vineyards or drink water from your wells. We will travel along the ruler's highway and not turn to the right or the left until we have passed through your land. But Edom replied, you will not pass through here. If you try, we'll take up the sword and march out against you. The Israelites replied, We will travel only on the main road, and if we or our livestock drink any of your water, we'll pay for it. We ask you only to let us pass through on foot, nothing more. Again, Edom answered, You will not pass through, and met them with a large and powerful army. Since the Edomites would not let them pass through their territory, the Israelites turned away from that area. The whole Israelite community left Kadesh and traveled to Mount Hor. At Mount Hor, near the border of Edom, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Aaron will be gathered to his people. Your high priest will not enter the land I give the Israelites, for both of you rebelled against my command at the waters at Meribah. Take Aaron and his heir, Eliezer, and take them up Mount Hor. Remove Aaron's vestments and put them on Eliezer, for Aaron is to be gathered to his people and will die there. Moses did as God commanded. They went up Mount Hor in the presence of the entire Israelite community. Moses removed Aaron's vestments and put them on Eliezer. And Aaron died there on top of the mountain. And when the entire community learned that Aaron was dead, they mourned the former high priest for 30 days. Our New Testament reading continues out of Luke chapter 8 verses 1 through 15. Now soon after this, Jesus journeyed through the towns and villages, proclaiming the good news of God's reign. With Jesus went the twelve, as well as some women he had healed of evil spirits and sicknesses, Mary of Magdala, from whom he had cast out seven demons, Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward Cusa, Susanna, and many others who were contributing to the support of Jesus and the twelve from their own funds. With a large crowd gathering and people from every town finding their way to him, Jesus used this parable. A farmer went out to sow some seed. In the sowing, some seed fell on the footpath where it was walked on, 
and the birds of the air ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, sprouted up, then withered through lack of moisture. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns growing up with it stifled it. But some seed fell on good ground, grew up, and yielded grain a hundredfold. Whenever Jesus would say something like this, he would exclaim, Whoever has ears to hear, hear this. The disciples began asking Jesus what the meaning of this parable might be. He replied, To you the mysteries of the kingdom of God have been confided, but the rest have only parables, so that, quote, They may look but never see, listen but may never understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those on the footpath are the people who hear, but the devil comes and takes the word out of their hearts, lest they believe and be saved. Those on the rocky ground are the ones who, when they hear the word, receive it with joy. But they have no roots. They believe for a while, but fall away in the time of testing. The seed that fell among thorns are those who hear, but their progress is choked by the cares, riches, and pleasures of life, so they don't mature and produce fruit. The seed on good ground are those who hear the word of God in a spirit of openness, hold it close, and bear fruit through perseverance. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. Dan Berrigan has said, If you're going to follow Jesus, well, he got killed. That's just part of the job description, making trouble for peace. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Today we pray for courage to dig ourselves deeper into the good soil, so that your word may take root in us and bring forth fruit that nourishes those who hunger for freedom. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors.